In 2024, everybody's wondering if going into tech is even worth it at all, especially with things like AI and all these different design tools to just do, I mean, pretty much everything, right? From coding, designing, all that stuff. I think it's worth it. I think, you know, even though maybe the age of all these very cushy, very easy to come by jobs might be over, I still think that it's a good field to go into, especially if you're the type of person that's very creative and just enjoys designing, making things that are, you know, appealing, aesthetic, and, you know, just overall visually beautiful, right? So today we're going to cover what the 2024 UI UX guide is going to be for somebody that's trying to get into tech. So if you're someone that has no experience, you've only been curious about tech, but now you're wondering if maybe it's too late because of all the AI craze and all the layoffs, I'm here to tell you it's definitely possible and I'm here to tell you exactly what you need to do so that you can take, so that you can take steps forward in that direction. So let's go, let's get to this real quick. So first things first, right? You have to learn the design basics. If even if you're somebody at Drawswell that has maybe made some websites before because you know you have that special eye, you know how to make things look very appealing, you know, from a design point of view, it's still important that you get the that you get a good foundation on the basics, right? And it's also important that you start using that you start using technology and tools that are industry relevant. So making designs on Sketch and Figma is going to be a very big help to you. And the way you want to start practicing on this is you start making things. You start making maybe something like a UI mockup or wireframes, right? Now wireframes is going to be something that's specific to these um, tools. So if it's something that doesn't sound familiar, that's completely fine. I do encourage you to do some research on this and start making. things things on Figma. So I think a lot of people get very overwhelmed, even, you know, they think tech, they think everybody's coding, they think everybody's hacking the mainframe, all that stuff. So, so the next step after you get that, after you get to the basics in your, you know, in your UI UX guide, you don't have to worry as much about programming. It is going to be important for you to know and understand but you don't really have to worry about things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is going to be your bread and butter as a UI or front-end developer until once you get those basics down. And if it's something that still seems very intimidating to you, just know you're not going to have to deal with, I guess, coding problems or coding you know, issues as much as somebody that was maybe like a back-end developer. So for that, I do encourage you to also continue honing your skills by building projects. And if you don't, Maybe you feel like that's overwhelming, like you don't want to, you, you don't even know what to build, you don't even know what to start. That's completely fine. It would be my highest recommendation that you do tutorials from Udemy or YouTube. You can definitely get them for free on YouTube, but I would encourage you doing Udemy just because since those are courses that get sold to customers, you know, the customer being you, the person that wants to learn. Usually the people that develop these courses, they tend to keep up, they tend to keep up with them a little more just to make sure that the material they're teaching about is relevant, just to make sure that the tools and any technology you might need for your, in order to complete the course is available. Whereas YouTube, because it's free and, you know, everybody can watch it and view it. Sometimes people, especially the people that created it, might not keep up with it as much. So, all right, so you've made your designs in Figma. Now you have your, you know, you're learning to code in HTML, CSS, all that good stuff. Well, it's time to build your portfolio, which is something you should have been doing even before you got here. I think a big part of showing your skills as a developer is going to come from building things and showcasing those things to, and showcasing those things you build to people around you. So even if, if you don't want to just have very generic or you don't want to have, you know, just... I guess a pretend portfolio. You can always reach out to small businesses, to small businesses, maybe a food truck, maybe a local church, maybe friends that might want to give you ideas on what you can make for that portfolio again, right? But the point is that as you start designing things, as you start learning the code, as you start, even as you complete this tutorials, make sure you have a place, whether that's GitHub, whether that's your own website, where you're showcasing your progress and where you're showcasing the things that you're making. So next thing is going to be super important, definitely overlooked, and I understand why I can seem I can seem intimidating. It's going to be the networking. So the networking part is going to be key at at any and all points in technology. It doesn't matter if you're in cybersecurity. It doesn't matter if you're a backend developer. It doesn't, want, it doesn't matter if you're UI, if you're a project manager. Any role in tech is going to be a big part of your success in getting a job or being able to, you know, move from one job to another. Is going to come down to networking, right? And it might feel like a little bit of a chicken or the egg problem, right? You might be saying, Hector, well, if I knew somebody in tech, if I had connections, then I wouldn't be watching this video. And I completely understand that. It's definitely, it's definitely a place that I've found myself in. But 
here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you haven't done this, you need to make a LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is like the Facebook, Instagram. LinkedIn is the official social media of you know corporate America. This is where professionals, you know, they post accomplishments from their job. This is where people share thing good things that the company is doing. So this is basically kind of like the town hall of anything related to any tech company, especially. Once you make your LinkedIn profile and mind you please use a professional picture this is you know you can start following the companies you like and as you get a little more involved with these technologies that you're using figma you know java whatever it is that you're using you can follow those pages and you're going to see that the people that run those the people that run those pages on the linkedin they're going to put links for you know meetups conferences a lot of them are going to be online but it's still going to be a perfect still going to be the perfect situation for you to start getting your feet wet and seeing where people that have the same interest as you of becoming or growing into a ui ux developer are going to be meeting each other right and that might lead to other discord groups other meetups other conference so on and so forth and this is where i i get it it's going to take some courage to reach out and ask for help now maybe that's helping a project you're building maybe that's helping getting a referral but at the end of the day you do need to be able to make that initial connection so you do need to put yourself in a situ in situations that most likely increase the probability that you'll meet somebody that can you know provide you with a referral or just provide you with suggestions on how to grow and how to improve on your journey <clears throat> Now this is why even before we get to the networking, the building a portfolio is the most important part. Now let's say you were just walking around Walmart or whatever and you meet someone for some reason you overhear that they're a UI UX developer. Well that'd be perfect, right? And maybe they even just shout out to scan say, hey, you know, I'd be willing to help anybody that asks me how to become a UI UX developer. Well, that would be a perfect spot, but then imagine, you know, you reach out to me, you tell me, hey, that's me, I want to do it. What are they gonna say? They're gonna say, Great, like I would love to see your portfolio. And then at that point, you just completely freeze because you don't have a portfolio. So that would be a very horrible, horrible spot to be in. And like I said, you don't have to worry about, you know, having a super, a super professional portfolio. You don't have to worry about being the, you know, best, most, you know, you don't have to remake the Apple website with your portfolio, but you do want to have something to show for. You do want to show that you're constantly learning and improving because at the point when you do decide to reach out to others that could potentially help you land a job, land an internship, that's going to be the best way to connect with them because even, even if it's not a super professional, and by professional, I mean like advanced level, even if it's not an advanced level portfolio, they're going to be able to see that you're hardworking, that you're, you know, a quick learner and that you're somebody that's very passionate about UI UX. And at the end of the day, anybody that has the ability to give out a referral really only wants to give it to people that have, you know, I guess very high potential to, you know, end up filling that, end up filling that spot, right? For, you know, whatever job opening is available. Now, I know I went, that went a little long, but I do emphasize networking, super important. So after that, we're gonna leverage AI. I know a lot of the worry that comes right now is well, there's all these apps, there's all these apps to generate, you know, to generate code, to generate graphics, all these apps to make apps and whatnot. And at the end of the day, you need to use this to your advantage. Doesn't matter what part you get stuck in in your journey, you can leverage all of these AI tools to help you learn faster, get better, and improve, and you know just iterate over that constantly. So basically, what I mean here when I say no more textbooks is I think that in something as complex as you know a tech journey, regardless of what industry, regardless of what part of the industry you were trying to go on. Something that was very difficult for people and maybe discouraging was, you know, when you have to learn from something like a textbook, even when you have to learn from something like YouTube, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of closed off to having to learn the material in the way that, in the way that the message is being conveyed to you, right? You have to make yourself understand the information that's being presented to you in a matter that the presenter you know, decide to showcase it to you. But with tools like ChatGPT, which you can just ask questions in plain English, no matter how complex, no matter how, you know, complicated they may be, it can answer you clearly. And if you don't understand the answer it gives you, you can iterate to it. You can, you can emphasize to it that it gives you, you know, maybe a simpler explanation, maybe an analogy for it. So leveraging AI is going to be super essential to you being able to learn quickly, build things quickly, and again, just make those. It's going to help you speed up your journey to get to a point where you can start making connections and start, you know, leveraging opportunities for interviews and for career fairs and all that stuff. And again, at the end of this, it's going to be rinse and repeat. You don't get to a point where you're just a super, you know, 
a super professional expert, advanced level, you know, there's no course I can give you that. There's no certification that's going to say, hey, this person's an amazing UI UX developer. That doesn't exist. Certifications are valid. Cert certifications show effort and it shows that you're, you know, competent in what you do. But I think for something as, I guess let's say vague as making designs that are functional, that are beautiful, that are appealing, um, it's going to come down to what you can showcase both in your portfolio and how you walk people through that and how you communicate those ideas. And in the interview, you know, like with the team you're working with or with the team that interviews you. Well, no, I think going for something like front-end development in 2024 is super attainable. It's going to be helpful that you have tools like AI right now. It's going to be helpful that you have tools like AI to help you speed up that learning process. And it's going to, it's definitely going to be a race, a race with time to see who can learn the quickest now because of these tools. There are going to be people that are going to take advantage of this and try to learn as quickly as possible, try to take advantage of these opportunities that they wouldn't have otherwise had. And I think this is a perfect opportunity for you to do the same. I do appreciate you watching. If you have any tools about your career journey, maybe you're still stuck. Maybe you don't know if you want to do data science, front end development, back end development. I do have a discord you can join and I would love to, you know, have a conversation with you one on one, anything to help you get started on your journey. Cause I know myself when I started, it was something very intimidating because I felt like I have anybody I could reach out to. I wish you the best of luck on your journey and I hope you have a wonderful and amazing career.